Catholic caller. Welcome to the show. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Hi, William. Hello, Rabbi. This is Jen calling from Dallas, Texas. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, I have a bit of a situation I'm concerned about. I just moved to Dallas, and it's a pretty big community here, so obviously I don't know everybody yet. Um, I met a couple at the grocery store who saw my husband's kippah and started making small talk about our being Jewish. As we were leaving, they gave me their card and invited us to a Passover Seder. I thought it was a Jewish couple who just realized we were new and decided to invite us for Pesach. Well, I went looking them up to see if they were Reform, conservative, or what have you. Turns out they belong to a Messianic group here in Dallas, and they're hosting a big Messianic Seder. Now, I'm new here, and I'm not looking to start trouble, but I'm very concerned. What should I do? Should I warn people? Are these people really going to try to convert Jews through a Pesach Seder? I mean, I'm just shocked, and I'm wondering what to do. Wow, this is so this is so repetitive. This is a very serious problem. There are Messianic Passover Seders, quotation marks, italics, not only in Dallas, but throughout the United States and Canada, wherever there are Jewish communities. You can go onto the websites of chosen people, Jews for Jesus, and find out whether there's a Messianic Passover Seder anywhere near you. Uh, These Messianic Passover Seders are not real. What the church is doing is blurring the distinctions between Judaism and Christianity in order to lure Jews who would otherwise resist a straightforward Christian message. So they take Jewish icons, liturgies, holidays, uh, celebrations, and interpolate, insert into them a Christological message. But they use the verbiage, they use the traditions of the Jewish people. They use rabbinic traditions. They don't care. They will weaponize them in order to bring you to the church. This idea is not a modern invention, although this iteration is relatively modern, but you can trace this kind of behavior of consumer fraud, of using Jewish traditions to evangelize, you could trace that right back to the first century, not just to the first century, but to the New Testament itself, not just to the Christian Bible, but to the earliest surviving letters of the Christian Bible, Paul's letters, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20, 21, 22. Paul says this is the way he does stuff, and he encourages you as a Christian missionary to do the same. To the Jew, become as a Jew, that you might gain the Jews. If those who are not under the law become as one who's not under the law, meaning a Gentile, that you may gain those who are not under the law. Paul says he can become all things to all men, that by some means he may bring them to Christ. So this method has been going on for a long time, however, The Messianic movement has amped this up in basically the last half century. And in this case, what missionaries do is they present their activities as though they're Jewish. They present themselves as though they're Jewish. They take Jewish traditions, icons that are found nowhere in the Torah, nowhere in Tanakh, and use them. Let Let me explain. So as I mentioned at the outset, there are messianic Passover seders really all over the world. Now, if you went to one, don't go, but if you did, (laughs) you'd notice at the seder table, this messianic Passover seder table is set in a fairly traditional way. The whole deal, the Manashevitz, everything you would, all the accoutrements you would expect to find Mm. at a traditional Seder table is there. But they give every Jewish tradition a Christian spin, a Christological message. That's right. So they have wine at their Seder table, Manashevitz, the whole deal, Mug and David, the whole deal. But they will tell you Do you know why the Jews have wine at their Seder? Do you know why? Because the wine represents the blood of Jesus. And what does this represent? The death of the firstborn son and the death of the lamb. Messiah is the firstborn of God, and he's the lamb of God. Well, this is the covenant of Messiah who says, I will pay the price for you. And so on Passover, we remember this. Let us partake of the cup 
of Messiah. And the matzah, do you know the reason why Jews have the why there's a matzah at the Passover Seder table? Uh, not at all because of what it says in Exodus chapter 12, let alone why is it mentioned in Exodus chapter 12. You know why they have the matzah? Because the matzah represents the body of Jesus. Now, it gets more interesting this. Do you know why? Do you know the real reason why Jews have three matzahs at the Passover Seder? Why three? Why not four? Why not two? Because three matzahs represent the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Av, Ben, and the Ruach HaKodesh. Three as in a trinity of matzahs. And then you have the second of the trinity in this, the middle matzah, becomes the center of the Passover, the second of the trinity. You ever notice that the matzahs are perforated, they have holes in them. Ever wonder why matzahs have holes in them? Because Jesus was perforated, he had holes in him. You ever notice that the matzahs, look carefully at a matzah, and they have lines, parallel stripes going up and down. Why? Why do you think the Jews put them there? Because Jesus was scourged, he was whipped, he was beaten, and there was lines on his back, just like a matzah. And here you have matzah, which here is a symbol of no sin, the bread of life, life-giving. Even this is striped. If you look closely, you could see through it. It's been pierced. It's been, in a sense, wounded. It's been, it's been through the fire oh. here. You know why that middle matzah is broken? Because Jesus' body was broken. You know why that middle matzah is wrapped in a towel? Because Jesus was wrapped in a shroud. Do you know why that matzah is hidden beneath the Father? Because Jesus was hidden away in the tomb. You know why that matzah is brought back as the afikomen at the end of the Seder? Because Jesus will return. Because Jesus resurrected from the tomb. And... This is the matzah, the middle of the Trinity, that is always broken. The body is broken. Then one part of this is taken after this is broken, and the body is wrapped in a cloth and hidden away. And this is called the afikomen. He was, he came, the second of the Trinity, he was bruised, he was broken without sin, his body was broken, he was put away, wrapped in a shroud, hidden away, and even hidden from his people for 2,000 years. And then at the end, it, the, the Seder can't conclude until they have him back. So then he comes, then it comes back, and then comes, and that's when he says, you will see me again. Every idea, every element of the Jewish tradition in the Passover Seder, and there is no... Uh, festival, there is no event in the Jewish life cycle that is more pregnant, more filled with Jewish traditions than the Passover Seder. And the very same people, the very same characters that are first to attack Jewish traditions, Jewish customs, referring to these things as rabbinic Judaism derisively, but the messianic movement happily will weaponize Jewish traditions, will exploit these Jewish customs to convey a Christological message. So the Last Supper that you find as a Passover Seder in three of the four Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the Last Supper is a Passover Seder. What you find in a messianic Passover Seder is very much what you'll find in a in a messianic congregation. You know, they light the Sabbath candles at a messianic congregation. Although there's no mention of this anywhere in Tanakh. There's no mention of this in the Torah. It's a rabbinic tradition. The same rabbinic traditions that they detest, they attack. Without pause, they will use it, abuse it, weaponize it, and say, ah, we're lighting the candles for Sabbath. Why? Because, the, because Jesus was the light of the world. Same thing goes on at a Messianic Passover Seder. So a Messianic Passover Seder is filled with Christian theology and the every single symbol, the three matzahs, why are they there? They represent every kind of Jew, the Kohen, the priest, the Levi, the Levite, and the Israel. 
So what they do is instead they say, no, 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 this represents the Holy Trinity. This is not in the New Testament because the Holy Trinity, even the word Trinity, was invented by a Latin church father, Tertullian, in the third century. A church father from Carthage invents the word Trinity. It didn't even exist. So they take a, a Roman Catholic church father they then use the theology that he promulgated, that he advanced, and the church would adopt and it would become orthodox at the Council of Nicaea under Constantine, and they just put it, they just put it right in the Passover Seder. So you will find, expect to find Messianic Passover Seders wherever Jewish people can be found, but they put into it a, a Christian message. And my friends, the way to respond to this, there's only one way to respond to the efforts of Christian missionaries that are targeting Jews using this consumer fraud. And that has to be education. That has to be knowledge. That's the only way to respond, to, to empower men and women, especially the very young and the very old, who are often very vulnerable to Christian missionaries, to the efforts of these messianic groups, empower people with knowledge. If people understand what the Passover Seder is and what these missionaries are trying to do, no Christian will be able to rob a Jew of his faith. Thank you so much for your question. <laughs> בטרם כל יציר נברא, לעת נעשה 